We're deep in the weeds of earnings season. Novartis has given us their third quarter sales. That beat the analyst estimates with guidance coming in line as the firm raises its profit forecast for the third time. This is the first report since spinning off Sando's generic business. Joining us now to discuss the numbers is the CEO, Vaz uh, Narasimhan, joining us from Basel. Good to have you with us. Do you know what went through my mind when I looked at this? I saw you six years ago, and you set off on a journey to change this company. How unshackled are you today with these numbers after the spinoff? Good morning, Vaz. Good morning, Manus. Good morning, Danny. Great to, to see you both. You know, it's been a six-year journey to transform Novartis into a pure play, innovative medicines company. We've done about $100 billion of transactions over this time. We created three global leading businesses, supported the creation of a consumer health business, the Alcon Eye device business, spun off Sandoz into a leading generics company. And now what I see everyone is seeing coming through in, in the third quarter is Novartis as a pure play, innovative medicines, I think, powerhouse. And you see we were able to deliver double-digit sales growth, over 20% core, uh, core uh, profit growth, which really shows, I think, the business now really showing what it can deliver as a pure play, innovative medicines company. What do you think, then, is the next challenge that you face on the horizon, given you've pivoted to this pure play model? What do you need to conquer next? You know, for us, it's going to be delivering in our four core therapeutic areas. A big mantra now inside the company is focus, focus, focus. And we need to keep delivering strong pipeline assets and launches in oncology, cardiovascular and renal diseases, immunology, and neuroscience. And when you look at the portfolio of medicines that we have, we think we have nine major medicines that have multi-billion dollar potential that can deliver that growth over the coming years. We've guided to 4% plus growth and 40% core operating income margins out into 2027. And when you look at the, the performance of some of those growth drivers, we're really excited about the performance of our breast cancer drug, Kiskali, our multiple sclerosis drug, Casimpta, the emerging uh, uh, performance of our Pluvicto uh, prostate cancer medicine, amongst others. So I think everything's headed in the right direction, but of course, we're going to have to consistently deliver on that pipeline and launches to be successful. Look, the one hot button topic, and, and, and we'd like your views from a t couple of different angles here, is obviously on the obesity drugs. I mean, the world is in a frenzy at the moment. You dropped uh, one from development, MB Al 949. You talk about high risk and high reward. Where are you in that narrative in the obesity drugs? What comes next for Novartis? What have you got in the pipeline? How do you plug that hole? Look, on obesity, we're taking a much more next-gen look at what could come in the future. We have early-stage research efforts uh, looking at what mechanisms might support patients to uh, impact obesity. And we really look at this from the lens of how can we impact cardiovascular disease and renal diseases, which are core to our long-term focus. But what I like to think about is rather than chasing the herd into obesity, mm -hmm. where can we deliver breakthrough innovation where, where we're really uniquely positioned? And that's in this whole mm -hmm. new class of oncology drugs called radioligand therapy. It's in using CAR-T therapies to uh, really deliver almost cures in severe immunological disease, which is remarkable, and continuing to be in the leader in RNA therapeutics. These are three very large markets, we think 20 to $30 billion markets over time, that we can build and have a right. leadership position to really drive our long-term growth. So, so you're looking perhaps past the frenzy that we see now. But, but that's just, just on that point, because Manus is so right. Everywhere you turn, everyone is talking about these weight loss medications to the point where, where even Nestle is talking about uh, giving out products that, that complement things like Ozempic and Wegovy. What is the risk? Is there a risk in that uh, of this absolute madness we've seen around these products? Look, I think these medicines are, are really impactful, and these GLP-1 uh, GLP agonists have really delivered important benefits for patients across a range of different indications. But I think always we have to look at risk-benefit. Nothing comes for free when you're giving these kinds of, of therapeutics. And as you go broader and broader, you inevitably will pick up safety signals. And also, I think one of the questions is long-term use. How will patients stay on these medicines? Will they lose muscle mass over time? Will there be impacts on cardiovascular risk because of the impacts on heart rate uh, and other factors? 
So these are all things I think the next generation of drugs are going to need to uh, address. But I think it's important also from a public health standpoint, diet, exercise, some of the fundamentals can't be lost. Yeah. There's nothing that, that really comes for free when, when you think about longevity. No, I can assure you there's nothing for free. You've just got to do more miles on the treadmill or walking around New York. Uh, look, we, we, we could have endless conversations uh, about those drugs and the societal impact, but we're here to talk about you and your business. Um, Rush does a $7 billion deal. Uh, the natural sort of generic question is, do you feel under pressure to do another deal? Let's dispense with that. Um, where is the market? Is it getting more expensive for you to do the kind of deals that you want to do, given the heat that somebody like Roche has turned up in the market? What is the, the deal objective for you? You're six years in. What do you want to... What if, I'm not saying it's your swan song. You could be there for another six years. But what kind of deal do you want to do that sort of says, yes, I was here? Our focus is on these bolt-on M&A deals that are within our core therapeutic areas that really build scale within those four therapeutic areas I talked about, or that give us a further technology advantage, like we did an early stage deal uh, in the area of small interfering RNAs in these technology platforms we're trying to build. You know, when I look at the market overall, of course, the biotech sector is having its second year of really historic lows, at least the historic lows over the last decade. So certainly the valuations can be supportive of, of activity, but really we're driven by the science and we need really, really strong science okay. to make uh, make these bets. Mm. And I think it's critical to look very carefully at these assets and, and make the, the appropriate valuations. Oh man, see, I was I was looking for the tie of, of can can we judge how relaxed Vass is dressed depending on whether or not he's moving into into uh, biotech or not. We'll have to play that game next time, Vass. All right, does that mean then, if you're looking for bolt-ons, that the era for transformative M and A for your sector, for you and your peers, are, are we far from it? Are, are you going to leave the bankers just waiting and, and hoping for those types of deals? Well, the bankers will keep coming, I'll assure you of, of that. But, I, you know, I, I think when you look at our, our sector over the long run, there really hasn't been significant consolidation in over a decade. And part of that is just the reality that beyond a certain scale, uh, you don't get further scale effects from, from getting bigger in R&D or getting bigger in the, in the commercial environment. Now, of course, policies could shift that would mm -hmm. make that more attractive five years from now. But in the near term, I don't see consolidation events. I really see everyone trying to focus in, collect good assets from the biotech sector, focus on their internal R&D engine, and hopefully drive successful launches in the market. Vass, really wonderful to catch up with you this morning. Please come join us anytime, whether, whether earnings results or not. Vass Narasimhan there, the Novartis CEO. Thanks.